Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question Maximum Number of Events That Can Be Attended Part 2. In this question, we are given an array of events where event of i denotes start day and day in the value. The ith event starts at start day and ends at end day. And if you want to attend this event, you will receive a value of value i. You are also given an integer k which represents the maximum number of events that can be attended. Now you can attend only one event at a time. So if we choose to attend an event, we must attend the entire event and the end day is also inclusive. That is we cannot attend two events where one of them starts and other ends on the same day. We need to return the maximum sum of the values that can be received by attending events. Now over here we are given certain examples with the problem. So in the first example, there are three events given to us and the maximum number of events that can be attended is two. Its output is 7 as shown in the diagram that we can attend the event with the value 4 and value 3 to make up the highest sum. In the second example, we see that we can only attend one event thus making the highest sum because attending two events make up the sum as 7. It is similar to what the first example is only the value of the event got changed to a higher number. In the third example, it is shown that even if there are non-overlapping events, we can only attend k events at most. Now that we have read about the problem and the example, we have the fair idea of what needs to be done. This question is the second part to the maximum number of events that can be attended problem. If you haven't watched the previous video, I'll highly recommend you to watch this particular video before moving forward with this particular problem. So now let's start to understand what the problem is all about. In this problem, we know that any event that we have will have a start day, end day and a value attached to that particular event. So let's take the first example that was given with the problem. The example was, so we know that from the previous part as well that we need to first sort this particular given array into an ascending order based on the start and the end value. Because in order to attend any event, we need to know that what all events will be taking place and at what point of time they will be taking place arranged in an ascending order so that we can create a schedule out of it. So after sorting these particular three values, the array will look like this. Now we know that we can attend at most k events. So we need to keep that value in mind. Starting off with any of the event that we have, we have two choices at every event. We can either select this event or we reject this event. If we reject this particular event, we can directly move to the second event and over here also we have two choices select or reject. If reject, then we again move to second and we have select and reject. Now let's talk about when we select the particular event. When you select that I will be attending one two and four event. You need to find out what is the next event that you can attend. The next event start value should be greater than the end value of current event. Well, that's the basic logic that we need to do. So out of these two values, it is ending at two. This is the value which is having a start value greater than the end value. So the start value is three. The end value of this particular event was two. So that means we need to move to three, four, three. Now the sum over till here was four. Now the sum we got from this is three and we got it as seven. Now this will be a variable over there. We will be always taking the maximum value. So that will be much more clear when we do the coding part. Now let's talk about how the structure or the complexity will be of that kind of solution that we're talking about. So when we are at one, two and four, we talked about we have two options to select it. That means we need to find out the next event from here or to reject it. That means we'll move to the next event in array. Now in both the places we are finding the next event. Only thing is in this next event in array, we just move to the next position. We can say it is position plus one. And over here, we need to apply some logic to find out what will be the next event, which will be fulfilling this particular condition of ours. So in the reject column, we'll directly move to the point of two. Again, the select 
and reject will work in case of reject it will move to 3 4 3 now let's understand the value of k over here k will be 2 as we have rejected we still not selected anything so k will be 2 over here also we haven't selected anything so k will be 2 we know that after this particular event the next event which satisfy the condition start value of the next event greater than the end value of the current event will be event 3 4 3 when we come here we have already selected one event so the k value will be 1 over here over here we have option of select and reject in reject since there are no elements left this case is not possible in case of select the k is 0 we have reached the end of the array so we return now moving on to the part wherein we have selected this 2 3 1 and k is 2 so since we have selected it the k will be 1 but we have reached the end since we won't be able to find any event which has start value greater than 3 so end of a array and we return so since we since at every event we have two options either to select it or to reject it it forms a tree kind of a structure for the solution and since it's a tree kind of a structure the complexity to iterate over this whole tree will be 2 to the power n at each select and reject we will be finding out the max and that will become the answer for the event and that will become the answer so if we find out that since we selected this particular for here it's 4 here it is 3 it is 0 now the max of these two is 3 so it go till here it is added in this and the answer is 7 now here we rejected it over here we selected the answer becomes 1 from here it is 0 the answer is 1 the max of 7 and 1 is 7 and the answer is now 7 and that's how the answer came out to be 7 in this particular case let's first code up till this point and then we can talk forward so since we know that we will be first starting off with sorting this particular events array we need to have a result variable which will hold the maximum value that we can get so we will do those two steps Now that the sorting is done, we need to simply start off with the first event that we have in this particular array. So we'll have a helper function for that. We'll pass on the required parameters. And this helper function will be returning the answer. So we might not use this max variable that we have defined. Now let's define this particular helper function. will be starting from the 0th index and that will become our position the two exit condition that we saw in our explanation was either the index or the position that we are talking about is outside the range of this events array so if anyway the position is greater than or equals to n and anywhere if the value of the k is 0 in both these cases we have reached the either the end of the events array or the number of events that can be attended has been exhausted so we will just simply return 0 in this particular case now that we are clear with the exit conditions we have two options at each given point or the event we can either select the particular event so if we are selecting it we can add the value and now we need to find out what will be the next event I'm keeping this next event as a placeholder wherein we will be putting some code the other value that we can have is reject and in case when we are rejecting we can simply call the helper function with the next position pos11 pos plus 1 the k won't change and n since it's a constant the length of the events array won't change either now what we need to return is the max of these two values select and reject now talking about this next event this next event will be nothing but a recursive call on the helper function itself the events array same the position will be the next position k would decrement since we have selected one event that we are attending and n would remain the same now what will be the next position the next position will be any event that is between pos plus one and n which has the events pos 1 which is the end day 
less than the events whatever the next pause is zero the start of the next event greater than the end of the current event it is simply as that so let's write that down so we'll declare this particular function as well so now we need to find out the end day the end day will be so this is the end day we need to find any value that is greater than this particular end day we'll increment the position since the current position won't be the right position now how we can find out the next position we can iterate through this events array starting from pause plus one till n find out any event which has this end day smaller than the start day of the event that we are finding out and we'll just simply return that particular index and that will be all for us so a for loop from pause plus one to n and certain logics in it what its complexity would be its complexity will be o of n since we are iterating over this events array in a linear fashion let's say if we apply this logic then the complexity of this function call will be o of n we are recursively calling this particular helper function now since we know that the helper function each call in the helper function has two internal calls and we have also seen the structure in the explanation itself that it resembles a tree that means at each event we have two options since we know that the complexity of iterating o of n nodes recursively would have a high complexity of o of 2 raised to power n and since we also have o of n this particular complexity would be 2 to the power n into n which is a very high complexity now let's first focus on reducing this particular complexity and we will then move on to 2 to the power n complexity since the array events is now a sorted array finding out any value that is greater than a certain value can be done faster than this linear search operation rather than going to every event in finding out whether it is greater than the end day we can use binary search to find that particular position we'll write that down over here so we have to loop till the position is greater than n in binary search we find out the mid mid between position and the last value so it will be pause plus minus pause by 2 we'll simply check if the value at this mid the start is greater than the end day if that is the case we'll just shrink the window because this particular window will contain the answer if that is not the case we'll shift the pause to mid plus at the end we need to simply return the rightmost index now why we are returning the rightmost index is because in case wherever this mid is greater than end day we are marking this last index to be the index that we are finding out so this brings down the complexity to 2 to the power n log n the time complexity of binary search is log n now let's talk about how we can reduce the time complexity of this helper method so this was the last example that we see it won't be much clear with this particular example so we'll take another example so this is the whole tree for the example 3 that is given in the problem so we'll start off with 1 1 1 k equals to 3 select and reject and everything the one thing that we see in this particular diagram is there are many computations that are repeating itself now how they are repeating if you see here we have 333 three, three, k is 2 and the same at this place this means that while going down from this particular tree we will be computing this value since it is on the left it will be first calculated again when the right subtree of this computation happens we will be again doing the same computation so that becomes the redundant computation now let's see if there are any other values we see value 444k2 here 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 three times it is repeating and that is true as the number of values in this particular array increases redundant computation will increase exponentially with it so what we can do is we can store the intermediate result there are two values whose combination makes a value unique 
the event that we are on in the value of k if you will see 441k1 is here it is also here and here as well three times it is getting repeated so we need to have the results the intermediate results be stored for a combination of an event plus the value of k and that will become the signature for a particular computation if we apply that logic then in this array there will be at most events into k combinations so now let's change our code so we saw that we will be using a array let's name this as dp we are defining it as class level so that we need not to pass it as a parameter to the internal methods the dimensions of this dp array would be length of the events array and k plus 1 why k plus 1 because array is zero index base and we need to have the value k in the dp array also now initially this dp array will be filled with value 0 we need to initialize it with value minus 1 to show that whether we have reached this particular index or not by just looking at the value since it will be minus 1 then we haven't reached that particular combination and in any other value we will be sure that we have reached it and the result is already with us now as we said that if the value present at this position and k is greater than minus 1 we directly return this value this will save the computation for us now we find out the next reject and select will hold this particular result in this array and will return the same the time complexity now reduces to n into k let's clean the code we are not using this max variable so we'll remove this this pause shall be less than n now let's run the sample test cases so it ran successfully let's submit this so it got submitted successfully as discussed we have the time complexity as o of n into k log n while the space complexity would be o of n into k since we are using an extra space to store the intermediate results you can also put a code something like this so this would take care of the cases where k is 1 and we need not to go through all this logic and just return the maximum of all the events that we have but that just for speeding up this solution it won't create any difference in the time or the space complexity so what are the learnings that we have from this particular problem we see that if the input array is sorted or if we have sorted the input array then there are chances when if you need to search any particular value you can apply binary search thus bringing down the time complexity from o of n to o of log n that's the first learning the second learning is wherever there is a problem which resembles a tree and there if we find out there are duplicate computations that have been done we can use an extra space store this particular results and use them whenever we encounter such scenarios also make sure you find out on what particular input this result relies on so this dp of pos and k will point to a particular computation that we will need in future as well this brings down the complexity from 2 to the power n to n into k only the number of nodes is n into k so it was 2 to the power number of nodes now it is just the number of nodes computation i hope you like this video do let us know your thoughts comments in the comment section below thanks for watching this video see you in the next one